Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Proverbs chapter 18, beginning at verse 14 today. So get your Bible, open it up to Proverbs chapter 18. We'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found, as always, at the Bible versebyverse.com. And there you can study the whole Word of God with me at your pace, at your convenience, using my audio Bible messages for entire series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse, our archive for you. That's over 35 years of teaching, all there at the thebibleversebyverse.com. You choose, you click, you listen. At your pace, at your convenience, again, that's at the Bible verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, Proverbs 18, verse 14. The Bible says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? And we learn from this that what is inside of us is much more important than what is outside. A bad Bible translation, for example, that is based on a faulty Greek text is useless even though it may be wrapped in a beautiful leather cover with gold edges. On the other hand, a faithful translation like the King James Version or the slight updates, which really communicates the word of, word of God that which has been preserved in the received text, is valuable even if its, paper, if its cover is paper and it's tattered and torn. Because what's inside is more important than what's outside. And likewise, a strong body with a crushed spirit is not going to do you any good. But if your spirit is strong because your walk with Christ is alive and well, then Jesus will help you to persevere even if your body is broken or even if your circumstances are terrible in some other way. So it's very important to keep our spirits, our insides, strong in our relationship with Jesus Christ tight so that he can help us to endure whatever may come our way. 15. <clears throat> the heart of the prudent gets knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. No one who is really wise ever stops seeking God's wisdom. No matter how long we live or how much we know, there is still plenty more to learn concerning God and His ways. And our walk with Christ, no matter how wise and sanctified we may be, there's still more wisdom and sanctification to be obtained. That's why we should read our Bibles every day. Because that's the only thing that will give you wisdom, God's wisdom, and sanctification. 16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. <clears throat> and I'm glad that uh, I don't have any desire to be in the presence of great men. If I had money to afford that sort of thing, to be in the presence of great men, I would either buy more airtime to get out the Word of God or I'd find a good pizza someplace and eat it in a park. 
people love money. And to get, and they also love worldly things. And so you need a lot of it to get those sorts of things. Those who can afford to spend a thousand dollars can buy a spot at a, a, as a dinner guest with certain presidential candidates. But, and if that's important to you, that's, I guess that's what you'll do. But I've never, I can't imagine doing something like that. I have no desire to be in the presence of great men. I've never gone to a restaurant where you have to slip someone a $20 bill to him to find you a table. But I guess you have to play the game if you want to dine with so-called important people in the world. My thoughts are, who cares? Who wants that stuff anyway? I guess maybe a lot of people do, but when you spend time with the God of the universe, you realize that you've already spent time with the best. So why bother chasing after things like that? 17. He who is first in his own cause seems just, but his neighbor comes and searches him. This is so good. Word of God is so on target. Again, it's the idea of checking things out carefully before you come down on one side or the other of an issue. I have no respect for people who take the word of one person and jump on the bandwagon without hearing both sides of the story. Because with most stories, there are two sides. That is careless, that is reckless, and it's unbiblical. This verse especially. I don't know if this verse was the basis for allowing the cross-examination of a witness in court. But it could be. Because almost anyone can tell a story in order to make people believe something. But if that person has asked a few targeted questions, or if another party involved is allowed to speak, then that first person might be exposed as a liar. Consequently, God says, let someone speak but then ask them some questions or listen to the other side of the story. Don't just believe everything that a person says simply because he or she says that it's true. We owe it to God to listen to both sides of an argument. 18. The lot causes contentions to cease and parts between the mighty. So instead of arguing or fighting, wise Old Testament believers would cast lots, trusting that God was in control of the outcome, as he promised he would be in those days. The point is, both parties were willing to let God settle the dispute. <clears throat> Therefore, they were both willing to accept the result of the lot. And that's the principle that I want to carry over with us today. The principle is this, let God settle your disputes today by following the dictates and the principles of Holy Scripture. If the Bible says something, then the discussion is over as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to talk about it. It is what it is. It's settled. And if you want to argue about something that the Bible is clear as crystal on, then you're going to have to find somebody else to argue with because I don't argue the Bible or debate it. I proclaim it and I leave it be. It settles all questions. 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Quarrels that occur between relatives can be the hardest to settle. Many of you probably know that. God says that it's easier to conquer a fortified city than it is to mend a dispute between family members. 
and I would add especially family members who are following the dictates of their flesh instead of following the leading of God and the Holy Word of God. Because when people are operating by their sin nature, you might as well forget about reconciliation. Because self is on the throne and self is not satisfied unless it gets its own way, whether it's right or wrong. 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. In other words, if you speak good words, words that are led by the Holy Spirit, then they're going to bring you satisfaction. There is a blessing for you if you let God control what you say. 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you love to talk, you're one of those people that just loves to talk and talk, then get ready, prepare yourself for the consequences, because they are coming. We will eat, God says, the fruit of our words. Sometimes it'll be good. Sometimes it'll be bad. The fruit we eat depends on the words that we speak. In other words, your life is affected by the words that you speak. And I'm not saying that you create your own reality, as the word of faith liars say. I'm not saying that at all. But there is a measure of truth within most heresies, and there are consequences to the words that we speak. Your words don't have, do not have the power to create to cause blessing or curse. But words have consequences because people hear words and they respond to words. And if they're good words, then they, you, you will get a positive response. If it's truth, then in the long run, it'll be a positive response. If it's a lie, if it's slander, well, you're headed for trouble. In that sense, your life is affected by the words that you speak. Certainly true. 22. Whoso findeth a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. So, assuming this is a Christian life, of course, otherwise God would not say it's a good thing. A Christian wife who tries to put Jesus first is our Lord's way of saying to a man, I'm doing something nice for you. I'm giving you something nice right here. There are many men who love Jesus Christ. There are many men who don't have godly wives, just like there are many wives who do not have godly husbands. Unfortunately, there are also plenty of people who don't value the godly spouse that God has given them. And so they are wasting a great blessing from God. They're not taking advantage of that great gift from God. A good Christian man and a good Christian woman together is a hard combination to beat. And while no relationship is perfect, it is possible to have a good one when the Lord Jesus Christ is the center of both people's lives. See, the degree that both live for Jesus will determine how blessed they will be by God. 23. The poor uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. There are times when a person's bank account really does affect their personality. Not all rich people have bad manners, and not all poor people are humble and well-mannered. But according to God, many times, because of their financial situation, that's the way it is. 24. A man who has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We are blessed if we even have one real friend who knows Christ 
and is there for us to pray and to instruct and to encourage. We are really blessed if we even have one person like that. And I would say that it is much better to have one friend like that than many so-called friends who lead you away from God by their bad influence. And by the way, the closer we are to Jesus, the less we will want to be around those whose lives are not ordered by Him. You might have to be, but you won't enjoy it. And we'll stop right there. Remember, you can study all of, all of the Bible with me verse by verse using my audio Bible messages at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Choose, click, and listen. Study the whole Word of God at your pace, at your convenience. Again, that is at the Bible verse by verse dot com. If you would like to be a part of this ministry that has been doing absolutely nothing except getting out the Word of God for over 35 years without watering it down. You can be by praying for me and God's Word. And also when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead because that's another way that you can be a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.